need to uh, we need a motion to come out of executive session. Councilmember Adams asked, seconded by Councilmember Hammer. All in favor? Aye. All those motion carried. We're out of executive session and we'll start the regular meeting. Could we please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag. Please continue to stand as we have a moment of silence for our veterans. Tonight we have Reverend Rick Lasano for the invocation. Father, we want to thank you for your goodness and mercy you show to us. We thank you for our nation. And Lord, uh, this coming week, as we celebrate Memorial Day, let's remember that the freedoms and everything we have in this nation was bought with a price, bought with blood and lives. And Father God, we want to thank you for, for our service men and women, our veterans. And we thank you for our police officer. And we still uh, pray for uh, Officer Black Chief, Father, for his complete healing. We ask, Father God, that whatever happens at this meeting, Father, be according to your will, that, Lord, there'll be peace. And Father God, that it'll be uh, constructive. Lord, we ask your blessing here. We ask your presence, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, could I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Christine Adamczak. Here. Councilmember Linda Hammer. Here. Councilmember Michael Jasinski. Here. Councilmember Gerald Kaminsky. Present. Councilmember Brian Nowak. Councilmember Brian Polarski. Present. Supervisor Diane Benchkowski. Here. Okay, we are all present here tonight. Our public comment period. This is an opportunity for residents to comment on items appearing on the agenda of the town board meeting tonight. The public comment period should last 15 minutes maximum. Each speaker may speak only once, and each speaker shall be limited to a maximum of three minutes speaking time. If you'd like to speak, make sure you sign one of those sheets. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. This one. <laughs> I know. Okay, um, the first speaker is Scott Weaver. Hello. Yeah, this is Scott Weaver. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is um, the seniors and what we talked about two weeks ago. Well, Obama comes out and said that the healthy will pay for the non-healthy. Biden comes out and says the people with good credit is going to pay for the people with bad credit. So for the seniors and their, to get that, I think um, that should be the same. I mean, the liberals set it up th that way with Obama and Biden. I think the um, seniors should get their, their credit, 50 or 60,000, whatever. If, if, if the people with good uh, <coughs> credit has to pay for the people with bad credit and the healthy have to pay for the non-healthy, then the people of Chictawaga can pay for our seniors. That's, that's my comment. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Let me clear the timer out. Um, Wally, you're next. We have somebody who didn't sign. or So, Wally, you're next. Good evening. What a week, huh? Since I seen you last, there was a shooting in Town Park. Tragedy. Not a lot of comments coming out of the town. You know how terrible it was to have a person rushed to the hospital, especially a child. But what's more important is the tragedy that happens inside this room. The tragedy for the fact that we've had hearing and hearing and hearing about hot dog heaven. And now it's, it's closed off, the public hearings closed off the agenda, from what I can see. And yet there's no path for us to follow. Some people are saying it's existing non-code conforming, there's nothing we can do about it. Some people are saying we need a seeker, we don't need a seeker. We, and you know what, as a resident here, I don't understand. And so I want someone, I want someone to explain it to me like, 
maybe I'm 70 or 80 years old so I can get it. Because it sounds to me like it's off the agenda, but we're just waiting for the right opportunity to approve the project. Because a lot of people put a lot of effort into saying, we don't want it. Um, my next comment is kind of personalized. If, if you're involved in an ambulance study, you should say that you're involved with it, right? Somebody was on that committee, somebody attended this thing, and somebody should have had some insight of knowing it was gonna be $88,000. My problem as a town resident isn't about the $88,000. Things cost money today, and we know things cost money. I mean, just imagine what we're paying for. All the people are getting paid in this room right now. Lots of money. But you know what? We expect you to own the work that you do. We expect you to own the decisions that you make. And we expect you to make those decisions in the best interest of the residents. Thank you. Thank you, Wally. Okay, so um, we have nobody else who had signed up tonight to speak on agenda items. So we will move on to the public hearings. Does somebody want to grab those two sheets for me? Or yeah, the, those next two. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, uh, Madam Clerk, we'll move on to the public hearing number one, the district rezone of the Transit Road property. A call for public hearing is made at the April 25th Town Board meeting, Resolution 2023-234, to discuss the, re the request to rezone portions of Zero Transit road um, that's SBL 114021016 and 114021017 be rezoned from the current redistrict designations of our residential and NS neighborhood service into MS motor service for the purpose of establishing a new automotive dealership public hearing was held at the May 9th town board meeting and the hearing was adjourned until today's meeting my office did receive several more emails those comments were forwarded to the town board members for review correct uh, is the developer oh, here tonight no Rick is that okay all right so we're just going to continue on to see if there's just one speaker tonight Richard uh, Keller Calorio No, he's not here tonight. I'm supposed to get a site plan set to my house. Oh. It's kind of hard to argue when you really don't know what you're arguing about. Oh, so he, they didn't send you a site plan? No. Rick, can you get him a site plan, please? All right, yeah, uh, Kim, Kimbers will have it. It's, yeah. So. We'll oh, in it. my opinion, it's just flat out greed. They have 49 stores. I mean, do you really need a 50th? They've got all the brands covered, in my opinion, so I'm not really sure if you know this is the right fit. Also, it seems to me it could be moved further up north. It wouldn't affect anybody's backyards on Strasburg Avenue or Strasburg Road, pardon me. If it's moved up, I don't know how that affects Croydon without a site plan. Kind of hard to make an argument. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I just don't want our street to turn into, you know, a test drive facility because it's a very long street, no sidewalks. There's a bunch of kids, animals, dogs, cats, the whole deal. It's very quiet. You should know yourself, of all people. And there's really no benefit for the residents whatsoever. You know, they're not going to give us a great deal on a car. I mean, that's not going to happen. Our taxes aren't going to come down. There's just no benefit for us out whatsoever. And I don't know if anybody's heard of the Ackerman NIMBY. Not in my backyard. That's all I got. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Would anybody else like to speak before we close this hearing um, tonight? This is about the West Tour on Transit Road. No one? Okay, so I'm gonna make a motion to close the hearing. Got a second, so we're gonna close the hearing tonight. Okay, move on. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, do you wanna talk about uh, the next one for the Creekside Drive and Viola Drive? A call for public hearing was made at the May 9th Town Board meeting, Resolution 2023-266, to discuss property known as Zero Creekside Drive, 12432-1, and Zero Viola Drive, which is 12432-22, be rezoned from the current district designations of residential into the adjacent CM General Commercial for the purpose of establishing a mixed-use complex featuring ground floor retail business 
and residential units in the upper floors. Several emails, actually one email was received by the town clerk's office and comments were forwarded to the town board for review on that as well. Yes, we got them all. Um, is the developer here tonight? Do they want to do a presentation first before? Good evening, board. Trevor Hout with Passero Associates representing Greenleaf Builders, who is a developer on the parcel. So this uh, project setting is on the corner of Harlem Road, Viola Drive, and Creekside Drive. Um, there's a contingency of seven parcels right there. Mm -hmm. Currently, what's there is the Polish Villa, which is unoccupied and for sale. And there's also some uh, commercial offices, buildings, I think it's a social club currently right now, and then some vacant lots that back up to the neighborhood. Those two, one of the vacant lots on Viola Drive is actually a part of the parking lot currently of the Polish Villa. Mm -hmm. um, so that is currently being used for commercial, but we just want to officially rezone it to commercial so that we can have our comprehensive mm -hmm. plan. Um, yeah, and not. then the other, the other parcel is over on Creekside Drive, and that's a vacant lot um, that is behind that social club. So those are the two residential parcels that we're trying to get rezoned to commercial. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to put in there is like what was described a uh, mixed use which will offer some transitional zoning from the neighborhood to the east up against the creek and then across the street Harlem we have our Erie County Highway Department so what rezoning these parcels will allow us to do is to create a nice comprehensive use that fits the neighborhood and allows some nice transition from the heavy commercial use of the highway department across the street to the neighborhood behind it and also will buffer any views directly to that highway department. So, um, okay. am I leaving anything out? Um, so, where are you in this process now? Because you, we actually uh, worked with Camille Brandon about the Restore New York funding. So that yes. that was approved. Yes. To so that the state funding is secured, and now we're going through the entitlements. And process. it has to be used for this project. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think. The developer could speak a little bit better mm -hmm. on the funding aspect. Oh, okay. There he is. Yes. Sorry, I want to steal the thunder. Mm -hmm. I talk enough. <laughs> Sorry, I, I do remember you being here last. How time. are you? So you I'm Tony Derpino from Greenleaf Builders. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So the Restore New York money was just um, the awards came out yesterday. So we were fortunate enough. To, um, you guys have been fantastic working with Rick and Dan mm -hmm. um, as the co-sponsor of the town of Chicawaga. So that was the first step. Uh, we're working with both owners for um, 1109 and 1085 um, contracts are in the possession of the attorneys. Um, so we were just waiting for the Restore New York money, which was the first step for the financing process, the financing vehicle. And Can you speak into that oh, microphone? For the financing vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, next step is basically uh, proceeding on um, setting up closings for all seven parcels for the two owners. And then thereafter that, working with our consultants and our engineers, uh, working with the town of Chictawaga and finalizing the DD drawings, and then getting to a point at the finish line of CD drawings, applying for state funding, through the state of New York, either through a 4% bond deal or a 9% competitive bid deal. Um, but the intent is to apply for an application immediately once we close. Okay, so right now you're just, we're, the hearing is just for the rezoning that you need that's to all, get this that's project all it is. going. Yep. Okay. Yep. It, it's gonna be a journey, uh, mm -hmm. as I call it. Typically doesn't happen overnight. So upon closing of the, of the seven parts with the two owners, it's, you know, it's not something that's going to happen in 2023. Realistically, the earliest would be probably sometime end of 24. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I'd say realistically uh, early 25. Okay. Worst case, yeah. I'm going to open it up to the council members first. Um, does anybody have a question? Linda yeah, Hammer? On your, on your yeah. um, diagram, that one blue block, that, no, the one that's right next to the big square to the right, Uh, any other council members? 
Okay, well, we have to open it up to the public. You have three minutes to speak. Um, so why don't you take a seat for now, and if we have to bring you back, we'll do that. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. Uh, Ping, it, that's all I have down here is Ping. You have three minutes. I just have a question about the, uh, as, owner, as owner of the property, do, I, do we oh, have oh, oh. a- Could you hold on one second? Sure. Okay, sorry about that. No, Go that's ahead. okay. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm just curious to know on the property as the owner of the uh, couple property on the street, like, do we have any say on the on the project, or it's just as as a developer they can, you know? You you need to speak. I'm up. sorry. I'm curious to know if if I, as owner of the property, do we have any say on the project itself in terms of zooming, or if or is it something that out of our control completely? No, you're here to sp speak about mm -hmm. the rezoning tonight. Okay. If you're in favor of it, mm -hmm. if you're not, or okay. if you have questions, the developer's here, so you can ask him some questions if you'd like. Okay, I, mean, I, I, I didn't see the zoning at all. I mean, obviously I can, we can see it, but uh, mm -hmm. okay, that's all my questions. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else wish to speak? Okay, I'm going to close this public hearing and we'll move on to the consent agenda announcement. A consent agenda is contained in as part of this meeting. If any council member wishes to remove an item for discussion, please tell me now and I will remove the item from the consent agenda and it will be added as a separate resolution item. Okay, then I need a motion to approve the meeting agenda as presented. Council Member Polarski, seconded by Council Member Kaminsky. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. I'll hand it over to you, Madam Clerk. I have a motion by Supervisor Benchkowski, second by Council Member Hammer, to approve all items on the consent agenda, including the meeting minutes of April 20, I'm sorry, May, May 9th, and resolution items 2023-296 through 327. And I need a roll call vote to approve all those items on the consent agenda. Council Member Adamczak? Yes. Council Member Hammer? Yes. Council Member Jasinski? Yes. Council Member Kaminsky? Yes. Council Member Nowak? Yes. Council Member Polarski? Yes. Supervisor Benchkowski? Yes. All items on the consent agenda have been approved. No resolutions were taken off the agenda. So I do need a motion and a second to add waiver items 2023, 328 through 330. Do I have a first? Council Member Polarski, second. Council Member Adamczak, all in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Resolution 2023, 328 is sponsored by Council Member Nowak. It is seconded by Council Member Adamczak. Buffalo Bungalow Inc. On behalf of Pocketeer Billiards LLC has requested that 26, 2460 Clinton Street, SBL 124336.11 be rezoned from the current designations of commercial, general commercial and residential to solely general commercial. The public hearing is to be held regarding the aforementioned zoning district change on June 13th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the council chambers during the town of Chicktawaga town board meeting. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution 2023-329 is sponsored by Council Member Kaminsky, seconded by Council Member Adamczak. Uh, the Chicktawaga Town Board on the 25th day of April 2023 adopted Resolution 2023-232. After further review, there is a need to rescind this resolution due to a ministerial error, namely the omission of the agreed upon contract price. The town board hereby rescinds the aforementioned resolution. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Resolution 2023-330 is sponsored by Council Member Kaminsky, seconded by Council Member Adamczak. The town of Chicktawaga issued a request for proposal on February 28th, 2023. Resolution 20. 2023-123 for the professional services for a comprehensive emergency medical service study. 
for the town of Chictawaga. Three proposals were submitted and said proposals were opened on March 22nd. Uh, CGR shall perform and complete the scope of work contained described in said proposal for all inclusive fixed fee of $88,000. The proposal for the Center of Government Research out of Rochester, New York is hereby approved and adopted. The supervisor is hereby authorized to sign any contract or other document that may be necessary for said study to proceed, subject, however, to approval by the town attorney. I'd like to table this. Could I get a second, please? For more information, no. We're all all okay with the eighty-eight thousand. I definitely have a problem with the eighty-eight thousand, and I like uh, the way that I have to figure out how this got here without us knowing exactly what we're spending it on. We just have a roll call vote then. Mm -hmm. Well, we we don't need it if I don't have a second on it then. There's no second on the table. But um, yeah, I guess to do the roll call, call vote, Madam Clerk. Council Member Adams Act? Yes. Council Member Hammer? Yes. Council Member Jasinski? Yes. Council Member Kaminsky? Yes. Council Member Nowak? Yes. Council Member Kolarski? Yes. Supervisor Benchkowski? No. The item has passed. That is the end of our resolution items tonight. As far as communications, departmental, departmental communications include meeting minutes of the Veterans Affairs Committee of April 5th, meeting minutes of the Conservation Advisory Council of May 4th. General communications include two notices of claim. Okay. Um, I have no further comments tonight. I'll move on to the council members' comments. Council Member Polarski. On Monday, May 29th at 11 a.m. at Town Park, uh, the Town of Chicago will have their Memorial Day event and then follow it up at 1 p.m. at the Donovan Post. Uh, they will also have their Memorial Day events. All are welcomed. Any other council members? Council Member Nowak? Uh, just this week, uh, May 21st to 27 is EMS Appreciation Week. So all those folks that work for the ambulance services, the volunteer fire service, do anything EMS related. Um, Thank you and you know, thank those people in your life and in your neighborhood that are doing that really critical work. Any council member Jasinski? Yes, when we celebrate Memorial Day, remember our veterans. Um, God bless America and enjoy, enjoy your barbecue. Any other council members? Okay, we'll close that portion of the meeting and move on to public comments. This is an opportunity for residents to comment on item matters involving Chief Tawaga. The public comment period should last 15 minutes maximum. Each speaker may speak only once, and each speaker shall be limited to a maximum of three minutes speaking time. Uh, first speaker is Scott Weaver. Scott, did you want to talk again? We had an incident. Um, um, can, are you speaking into it? Is it green light on? It is. Okay. We had an incident in Chictawaga where there was a shooting, and I don't know how many more that go on in Chictawaga, but um, I had to listen to this lady yesterday. It says, well, we didn't know there was gang or whatnot, we, so we couldn't. Anything over 20 people is a gang. Anything over 50 people is a mob. I've had people chase me around Somalia and other places, so our, our Chictawaga police are the greatest out there. Uh, let's do something for these guys to make it so that so they don't have to go and face these mobs. Yes, we're working on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, Cheryl Atkinson. Good evening, board. I come before you to um, address some of the neighborhood areas of my um, neighborhood, and I want to know who I can address to. I guess send pictures. I thought I was going to have them together tonight, but I can have them for the next meeting. Okay. Um, in the Allendale, I'm quite sure everybody know where Allendale is, mm -hmm. and the Kensington area. We have some um, businesses that are that don't keep up their properties, and we've been watching them for the last, um, I would say, a couple of months. We have to beg them to change their garbage and to shovel or to 
mow their lawns and to pick up trash. And it's, it, it's getting worse. It's not getting better. Um, the one marathon gas station that keeps on turning hand in hand seems like these, they come in and they just do what they want to do. They sell the blunts and the everything else and they don't keep their areas up. So I need to know who I can address in, in reference to getting more complaints out for these businesses that are not looking the part of our neighborhood. Okay, so the two council members are Council Member Polarski and Council Member Nowak are in charge of code enforcement. You okay. can let them know or I can give you code enforcement's phone number. You can call them directly. Okay. Um, do you I've got both have on. a, uh, yeah, okay, our let's give them the his his car, and then okay. you could email them the pictures okay. and I think that'll probably be the easiest because okay. I will be hands on with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, my other one is, thank you. My other is the water hydrants throughout Cheektowaga. They really look bad. Um, they haven't been painted. They're rusted. They look terrible. Um, I just want to bring that up because they haven't been touched in over probably 10 years. They're bad. That's the Water Authority, Erie County okay. Water Authority. They're located right here on Union. Okay. So you could probably look up their phone number directly right. and call them and let them know. The plows come over in the area and they dig up the, the gr you know, the road, and we have some, I guess, paintings that they're going to do something, and I need to know who I can address that to because we have some really bad potholes in areas where the plows have really damaged the road. The road or the grass? The oh. road. Okay. Um, I have pictures, so whoever mm -hmm. I can address that who, to. Who has that? Is that Chris? Um, Adam, Council Member Adamzak and Jozinski, I believe. Highway? Mm -hmm. Not in the back of that car, there's also Highway's phone number okay. as well. And then um, mm -hmm. Cleveland Street sidewalks. They've been terrible. I saw them. Mm, okay. Um, <coughs> Cleveland Street sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I dog walk. And the whole one side has been, in the last three or four years, there's no sidewalk, it's gravel. And I fell a couple of times, or tripped, not fell, tripped a couple yeah. of times on it. And I want to know when they're going to do something. When I had a couple of my sidewalks on my corner, the town sent me something and said, they'll do it or I, I can do it. And that was about what? 10 years ago. Well, no, we don't do sidewalks. It's up to the home, homeowner to replace So who do we get to get the, because it's been like, it's the whole block that's no sidewalk. Yeah, well, that so would be So if it's again. residential or business, the same thing with the building inspector uh -huh. mm -hmm. and myself. Uh, give Council Member Nowak and myself a call or an email, but also include the building inspector phone number there. And, call uh, you for anything, right? Rick Coburn's over there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because we, yeah, it's up to the code enforcement. We'll look at it and then let the homeowner know. Okay, my last agenda is the streets need to be paved again. And yeah. Uh, we you're we out of you're out of time. I okay. let you go a little further. Okay, but um, but that was my last agenda. The the streets are done every ten years. They're, they're on a cycle. We have our town engineer, you know, always keeps an eye on things. So I'll let him know that you've okay. questioned about Allendale. These, yeah, I'm gonna make these calls and I'll be back next meeting and yeah, we can get it done. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, Sandy Prisbalak. It's all right, take your time. I didn't start the timer yet. Okay. Sandy Brislak, you know where I live, 132 Roman Street. Can you, Sloan. yes, talk into, uh, can you hear her okay back there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, okay. <laughs> this is me. Um, first thing, um, I don't believe it's a good idea to have the elevator closed for three to four weeks because elderly and handicapped people, it gives them no access, they have to climb the stairs. No, we have um, satellite offices down there for the town clerk, well, correct? Well, I guess they have to watch the town board at home if they know how to use Zoom. No, there'll be, <laughs> it, it's right down there, there's a sign, right, Kim, with the town clerk? She's talking about the board meeting. I'm, not ta like I'm talking right about now. the board meeting. Oh, okay, I thought you meant the handicapped seniors, whatever, like the No, I, no. <laughs> I know where to get my handicap permit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm talking about the fact that we don't have the elevator in service for three to four months. 
or three to four weeks. That's difficult for the elderly and handicapped to get up here to see meetings. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is, what happened to this? Did we ever do anything with this? I don't know what that is. The urban forces thing that developed a few years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We haven't really talked to you about it. Yeah, yeah it was before my time here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably. Mm -hmm. So the question is, we don't know. <laughs> Nothing well, ever happened. Well, it was it. supposed to inventory all the trees, and we have the inventory now. Okay, but there was also a reforestation plan included mm -hmm. in this. Has anything been done with the reforestation well, plan? I think Linda, you've been working on getting getting the. Yes. Can you use the microphone? How long yeah. is Vandal gone? Probably, I what, think. year six, maybe, yeah. Well, he came out with that before he left. Mm -hmm. um, I gave everybody a copy at one point. I had Julie run them off. I gave everybody a copy about it so everybody knew, you know, what our plan was moving forward. Um, we do follow some of it when the trees are planted and that. We do the right planning for the right areas, shorter trees under power lines and this and that. We, do, we are following some of it, but not everything that's in there, no. Okay, I was just curious if it kind of got mm -hmm. neglected. When we talk about all these development programs, programs where we're going to destroy wetlands, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think <laughs> and yeah, the take down trees. I think most <laughs> of the board is in agreement. We always make sure that re they're replanting the trees, or they put the money into the tree pots for us to buy and plant trees in other areas of the town. Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, next is Joyce Heath. Nice to see you, Joyce. Nice to see you, too. Good evening. Can you hear me? Uh, speak up a little more, please, yeah. Good evening. There. Okay. Um, Cherry talked a lot about what I was concerned about, so I'm diddling what she's saying, but I, I do have a question. In our neighborhood, there recently opened a smoke shop on the corner of Cleveland Drive and Harlem Road. It's right behind the school, the Cleve Hill schools. And the schools are now having a lot of problems with the children going into the bathrooms and vaping and doing whatever else they do. Wait, hold uh, on. He's Okay. okay. Did did you hear everything I said about the vaping and the children? Mm -hmm. and yes. Uh oh. Um, my question is, do these stores are they regulated or before they even open, do you ask for a town meeting where people have some input in what is coming in, in the community? No, there's no we is Rick still here? Rick, there's a, you just um, they come in for a permit, right? Yeah. For a smoke shop. In this, in a storefront property. Unless they're trying to sell cannabis, but they need a cannabis license. Yeah, they can't sell the cannabis. But they sell those vape pens, and the children are smoking in the bathrooms and on their way to school picking up things like that. And if you have an older person, you just say in there, can you go get me some edibles? things like that, I, I, I think that it would be courteous to ask the community with something like a smoke shop, is it allowable or mm -hmm. can we protest about it? I don't think anyone wants their kids stopping on the way to school to pick up um, edibles and whatever they have in there. I'm, I'm going to take a visit, but my daughter told me they had all kind of stuff in there. Yeah, take a mm -hmm. look and let us know. Okay, last thing. Um, I live on Allendale. I've lived there close to 30 years, and I see some subtle changes in our community. And I would like to know, like with the, the Marathon gas station she was talking about, um, do people monitor these places, or they just can open up and, you know? Again, they, they needed a permit from the code enforced building and plumbing, so it would be up to them. To monitor it. Well, well, do you monitor them on a regular basis? They 
Not a regular basis. I mean, like Wally just said, there would have to be a complaint or a trail, whether it was a police call and, and there's repeat calls, then we would look and, and see, hey, there's a pattern, or if there's violations in regards to high grass, garbage, rats, and then there's a pattern, so they would get a little more attention now because they would be on the radar. With you guys bringing this up tonight, they're definitely on my radar, and I'm sure other council members' radar as well, so we'll be looking into to that area specifically. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Mm -hmm. Nice seeing you. Thank you. Carolyn Kish. Nice to see you again, Carolyn. Hi. I'm just here to give my two cents again about hot dog heaven. Make sure you're talking into that microphone. Oh, okay, hi. I'm just here to speak again about the hot dog heaven. Um, so when I first began to speak against the proposed Tim Hortons at 1551 Harlem, I spoke on an emotional level. I soon realized I needed a stronger factual argument. So on May 9th, I presented such an argument only to continue to hear from some board members that they still did not think there was anything they could do. I am now wondering if any board members have taken the time to read the town code regarding special use permits and specifically the codes related to drive throughs If you did, you would realize the law is in your favor and you could prevent this project from moving forward. Section 260.47 outlines the specifics for refusing a special use permit if such permit will result in the depreciation of values of adjacent properties, alter the character of a neighborhood, or be detrimental to the residents. Section 260.48 outlines the parameters for the drive-through itself. The existing one, which the architect stated they will use, is non-conforming based on its proximity to the Linden Street properties, which have existed since 1950, long before Hot Dog Heaven ever existed. The order board speaker system shall emit no more than 50 decibels measured at four feet from the speaker and shall not be audible at the property line of adjacent residential parcels. A traffic study and an environmental study are also required. These codes are written for a reason, to limit excessive development and to protect and preserve our communities. However, some members of this board seem reluctant to fight for its residents and take the necessary action to safeguard our neighborhoods. On April 25th, the attorney representing the franchise holder stated his client plans on making an investment in Chictawaga, but at what cost to my neighborhood and our quality of life? We will be dealing with excessive noise and light pollution, increased traffic and reduced safety for our residents, increased amounts of trash, as well as an ever-growing rodent problem in this area. I ask each and every one of you to take the time to review the regulations and laws that are on the books and realize that you as the board do indeed legally have the power to do something, and that is to deny this special use permit. And if I have any time left with regards to what that woman said about the smoke shops, um, I did email you, um, Supervisor, that the city of Buffalo is now has an ordinance uh, in effect. Yes, where, actually, we talked about that. Right, and, the town and you said that you would follow up with the town attorney about we that. We are still working on our code to add something similar. Okay, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Well, n no, we'll have to, you want to, uh, yeah, sign in again. Uh, um, we have to move along. If you want to uh, sign in again, who spoke just now? Do you want to speak? Um, you can just sign this and I'll call it on you. Right now, the next speaker is Melissa Galen on Harlem. Could you put your address? Um, yeah, do you want to put or tell it to me? I'll do my thing over here. <laughs> okay, you got the floor. Thank you. So last time I stood before you, I very quickly laid out the reasons why you should not approve the special for use permit at 1551 Harlem. There is no existing special use permit for the site. Even if a special use permit did exist, it's non-transferable per town code 26047F meaning Hot Dog Heaven's drive through is not grandfathered in perpetuity. I also stated that the law is on your side and your duty to uphold it. Let's lay this out in a bit more detail. 26048-2 st states the legislative intent in establishing the design standards for a drive through is for the purpose of minimizing and regulating the negative impacts. Tim Hortons, with traffic, cars, lights, sound, and air pollution, is all about adverse impacts. Subsection B continues, the establishment of a drive through is not permitted as a right. A special use permit may only be issued if it's supported by substantial evidence. This drive-through and consistent with Town Code 26047. This drive-through is not compliant with Town Code 
starting with the requirement to have 75 feet between the drive through lane and the residential property line. Here there's less than seven feet. The column code even calls out the difference between drive through facilities for fast food restaurants, donut shops, and banks versus drive through with less invasive uses. Tim Hortons falls into the fast food donut shop category without a doubt, where hot dog heaven with two cars an hour was a much inv less invasive use. Without a vote to close or keep this public hearing open at the last meeting, it fell off the agenda without a secret or DOT input. All I have is an email stating when it was removed from the environmental committee that it was going to the law department. What does this mean? If the town needs to hire outside counsel who specializes in, in, in this area of law, please do so. If I had more than three minutes, I could do this for you. There are many of us in this community with the same education as the law department who see this drive through as not in harmony with the general purpose of the intent of the town code, will depreciate the adjacent property value, will create a hazard to the health and safety and general welfare, and will alter the essential character in the neighborhood um, and be detrimental to the residents. Those are all the things laid out in the town code that you intended not to have happen, and all of that will happen with this drive through Also remember the numerous residents who have spoken out, the 89 who signed the petition, those who have come before you to speak, have written in, has sat in the gallery, and the comments online, plus those that were circulated to you via email with the town clerk, from the town clerk, even though they are not on the record. Your constituents have spoken, nothing about this drive through is compliant with the town code. The law is on your set, side to deny this special use permit, I once again implore you to do so. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Did anyone else wish to speak, speak tonight, I'll Wally? Give a closing statement. I'm always <laughs> up for a closing statement. All right. You know, my closing statement, I'll, I'll make it quick. Wally Carriero, 948 Dick Road, Cheek to Waga. You know, you got an awful lot of people starting to show up at these board meetings. It's going to be something when they show up to the polls, ain't it? So you better think how you're voting, how you're playing your game here, because people are sitting here saying we don't want the drive through. We don't want the smoke shops. We want sidewalks that we can walk on. We want you to follow the town plan. We want you to plant the trees that you said you're going to plant. We want you to remove the trees you said you're going to remove. Okay? It's not that difficult. I mean, it's really something that's really achievable by people who want to do it. I sit here and I look at the blank stairs. You know, instead, what we did is we had a question about spending $88,000 on something that you didn't even admit to knowing anything about when it came up. Three people had to ask you, weren't you on that committee? Weren't you on that committee? You're running for supervisor of this town and you want to hide? We need a leader. Diane, please figure out a way to get on the ballot because there's a lot of people here that would support you just because they would. Yeah, I'm campaigning. Have a good day, Jerry. I'm done. All right. Thank you, Wally. Anybody else wish to speak before we end the meeting tonight? Okay, you have, um, I just need you to sign in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank God, right? We yeah, get, it took, took a while, but we got that one done. I hope so. I hope you guys were reasoned. Mm -hmm. Disappeared. We were taken away. Okay. Um, so we have Linda here tonight. Yes, we do. Okay, Linda, you have the floor. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm with the survey question. The 88,000. Diane, I was going to second your motion, <laughs> but I can't. I needed a second. <laughs> Look, at, if somebody wants to spend $88,000, can we at least know what it's about? And I'm assuming that the cost of this will eventually trickle down to me, a resident, mm -hmm. and it's wrong. I want to know what this survey's about, and I'm sorry that all, I, I don't understand why nobody would second her. All she wants to do is find out what it's about. Am I missing the point? No, that's I, I did. I just wanted to know. More, I know. Like, what does that include? So, can someone answer? They won't. Yes, they will. <laughs> the committee members should answer your question. Correct. Mm -hmm. Who's on the committee? Michael. Oh. Answer. Can somebody answer so, why uh, you wouldn't second her? The study, I can answer what the study was about. I think you asked what the study was about. It's, it's an EMS study that we discussed back in September. 
we did a, uh, a call for a bid in February, and then we awarded an actual bid at the end of April to conduct an EMS study for how ambulance operations are working in the town of Cheektowaga. Then what it, you needed more information. Well, yeah, because the original resolution did not say, first of all, the amount, and it did not have the actual agreement attached. Okay. So when it comes to my um, office for my signature, I right. look at it. I'm like, wait a minute here. Uh, I wanted to see, and there was no dollar amount. So we worked it out through the town attorney and I. He recommended that, yes, you're correct, we should rescind and put it in again, but I still had the question, what are we doing with this $88,000? Exactly. <laughs> That's, That's why my I question. <laughs> because the, it went in today, and it, nobody even had time to look at the actual agreement. I, well, the agreement was actually in the April 25th agenda that it was wasn't approved. It was originally. And, and then also, it was also the scope of services are in the RFP that was put out, um, which was also part of a previous uh, board meeting. Um, so this all spearheaded it because res residents and the town board all feel that there is a slow response from AMR. We had AMR before us once or twice at most um, to answer these questions. The board as a whole decided to move forward with the EMS study. Um, as per the request of the EMS board, which is part of the fire districts. Gotcha. This board then decided to say, hey, all right, let's put it out for bid. That's where the RFP came out with the scope of services, which spells out what the job duties are and what we're requiring of whatever bidders are bidding on this contract. There was Correct. three bids. Uh, ad hoc committee was formed uh, from the chief of police and um, council member Nowak just happened to be on it because he overseen the fire uh, districts at that moment. Um, currently, the fire district overseen by myself and Council Member Adamzak. Um, so moving forward, seeing the rest of this study out and through, it will be Council Member Adamzak and myself with the EMS board that's always been in place to oversee situations like this of slow response times, no response times, during a blizzard not being around, et cetera. This study will then bring back the data and best practices from around this area in Western New York and even across the country because we're not the only ones facing these issues of slow response times. And, and there's many reasons for slow response times as put out by AMR, our provider right now, whether it's holdups at the hospital, lack right. of employees, lack of rigs in the area, being called out to other areas around the surrounding area. So this study will then come back and say, hey, what's best for the town? Do we go private? Do we uh, hold AMR up more accountable and, and say, hey, here's what we demand and expect for the next contract that we sign with them? Because mm -hmm. currently right now, we're, our contract's expired with AMR and we don't want to sign a new contract until we figure out what is best for the town and the residents to have better response times. As of right now, we don't know the full 100% what are the reasons and we don't have the solutions right now. That's what this study is going to bring back for us to make the best decision on that and what's both cost effective, all well but providing the service to the residents. That's, that sounds like a nice summary. However, when I looked at the agenda, I found the work session agenda from November 9th, and the AMS response times was Council Members Adamzak and Nowak had asked to discuss this. So I don't know why Council Member Adamzak was not part of that committee. We didn't know they were meeting at all. And you're still, a, you're still part of the Fire. Is AMR uh, response time. The response time. Um, and that's where. That that's I don't where know, the chief. I don't had, know if that one was related to the contract exactly, but. There was no um, other uh, meeting talking about this. You said November of 2022. I, I said September, but um, no, we'd have to look through some of the other agendas. I think that was one where AMR came before the board when we were in the courts that evening because we were in the courts for the last, the second of October, first of November, I recall. And that was just getting mm -hmm. some, so th that was about AMR coming in to discuss their response issues. That mm -hmm. wasn't about the, the, the request for a contract and that discussion with Chief Cool. that discussion happened in council chambers, from what I recall. Correct. We've had them before mm -hmm. us twice, once here and once uh, the courts, like you said. So. Okay, I'm well I hope curious. that answered your question. Linda, I'm sorry. I'm just curious why Mr. Nowak's even on that committee. Isn't that a conflict of interest, being that he's a first response? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. That's why I, I think that Council Member Adams Act should have been on there um, because she was working on oh. the ambulance well, agreement. I've been, uh, I've been the board liaison to the EMS board 
for several years now, and my colleagues up here have approved that. So, which is I also mean, set up by the supervisor. So, I mean, it, there's, there, there. I can see where the conflict of interest can be played, but it, we're talking EMS and not firefighters. He's a firefighter. Um, same line of work, similar line of work, but not the exact same. Um, it's not going to affect the fire districts, but I could see where the, there's gray area. But if, if you're going to take credit for making committees, also take credit for botching that then. Okay, so you, yes, you, can, you, can you just sign it so we have a record, please? Mm -hmm. Right, of course. So you got your three minutes. <laughs> Hi, Dawn Filipski from Raleigh Hollow in Chictawaga. Yes, when you do a fire, volunteer fire, you do EMS. So that argument, Brian, doesn't go with me very well. Secondly, on the 20, April 25th, maybe it was, I stood here in the beginning of the meeting and I had a couple comments. One was about that particular contract, I said, it says in toto or in totem or whatever it said. Mm -hmm. I said, what is that? Nobody answered. I said, how much does this cost? Nobody answered. I said, the uh, amendments that were supposed to be attached were not uh, ever attached. Were they attached today? They should have been, but they didn't go in until this afternoon. And you know, you're right because I wasn't here. You were that. not. The other guy was sitting yes, in your spot. Yes, my deputy spot. ran the meeting, so yes, that's he did. why I wasn't here to answer those questions. Yes, he but did. I noticed that that was not when I. It was not in there. So people don't have any clue. In fact, Mike Mazarowski was here, and he called me. Oh, Don, over here. The other question I asked was about the position. I don't know if that was this meeting or last meeting because they start to run together after you've been here. There's a new position in the town, and I asked the question, how much is that position going to get paid? And is it going to replace the other two emergency people? And nobody could answer that question either. Mm -hmm. And I know that that position was posted, and subsequently, voila, after it's posted, now I believe that there is a salary attached to the position, which wasn't originally attached to anything. So there is a salary now on there? Apparently, that's what mm -hmm. I've been told from my firefighter friends, yes. Okay. Um, and do we need something, possibly, on this particular contract? We had found out today we had three bidders. Well, we found out initially there were three bidders. We did not take the lowest bid. There's a criteria in there. Was that criteria fouled in determining mm -hmm. the bid? That's the question, and I think we ought to answer that. Was the criteria fouled? In, in getting that bid. The criteria was attached to the April 20, was it 23rd meet The second agenda for April. The contract itself was attached to the meeting agenda for No, it was today. not. It was not. Somebody must have put it I in was here, that. I told you all and it I wasn't know. attached, and you all looked at me like I was crazy. The contract is available right now, online, attached. So one, one can take a look over the bidder that was, was awarded. Was the criteria for the bid followed? There were five conditions. One was price, which was 20%. There was another one. There were a bunch of criteria that I saw. And was the five criteria followed to come to the second lowest bid? That's the question you all should be asking yourselves. Was it, I worked for New York State. I worked in a business office. Mm -hmm. We had to take the low bid unless you came to us and said, couldn't do it because of this. This is a non-compliant vendor or some other thing. Answer those questions. Thank you. Well, I agree with Don because I didn't see any other bids. So all I saw was the, the agreement. And that's why I asked to table it for more information. Okay. <laughs> Linda, you're on, I, I have to call you. We got to put it. Anybody else like to speak tonight? Yes. Do you want to sign? Hi. Yeah, can you just put your name and address? And if you want a response back, then maybe your email, but if you don't.
Okay, go ahead, Elton. Hi, my name is Christine Taberski and I live on Lawson Road. I've lived in the town all my life except for 12 years, but I'm new to attending these board meetings. But I've been particularly interested in the whole Tim Hortons thing. It's in the neighborhood that I grew up in and it's just st struck my interest. I find it, the people that are coming before you are fighting very hard to stop it. And I feel like the board, that you're not really paying attention, that you're not working for the people that you're representing. I sense this feeling almost of disinterest, not just particularly or specifically to the Tim Hortons, but with many of the things that have come up, it, I just get the sense that no one is really interested in what the residents have to say. And I find that very discouraging because if the only option the residents have is to come to you in hopes of getting, uh, being heard, but nothing ever happens, or again, there's just this, uh, to me, an apparent lack of interest. What is your role then? Like I say, you have these people that they're fighting so hard for this what are you doing for them? It just seems like you're doing nothing. And this whole, well, it went through the chain, the way I understand it is at whatever level it starts at and it goes up through the chain and then when it finally gets here, it's met all these approvals. Well, that's fine and good, but the residents haven't had an opportunity to say anything until these meetings. And I just think you're doing a, a disservice to the people that you are representing and not hearing them and really taking action. Not that you always have to deny something that, that uh, people don't like, but you're being provided, and again, with the case of Tim Hortons, they're providing you with codes, et cetera, and yet oh, I read, nothing, I wrote nothing, them down. Yeah. nothing seems to be happening. <laughs> I and again, I just, question, mm -hmm. I just question how well are we, we the residents being represented by the people that we have <coughs> voted in? I, I just. Does anybody want to answer her? Well, um, I just think I it's. Totally, I am total agreement with the residents. Mm -hmm. I'm against putting this in landfill. I am too. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's, mm -hmm. that's great. You're, but is, is anything going to happen? Or, is it still going to go through? I mean, it wasn't even on the agenda today. Mm -hmm. No, uh, we, we, there's a whole process that goes through. There's EAC meetings. Actually, they are posted on the website that people can attend those too. They're the environmental advisory committee. So you can, you know, th there's a whole process we have to go through for it. And then it comes to the board vote. I understand that. I understand that there's a process. But again, what mm -hmm. I'm questioning is it's mm -hmm. gone through the process. But does that mean that it's, it's a rubber stamp from all of you because it's gone through no, the process and it's been approved by all these committees no. or whatever? Does anybody, no, I mean. It's not a rubber stamp for me. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so then what mm -hmm. happens? Is it put to a vote? Yeah. It will be, yes. It just hasn't gotten to that point to where it's before this body to vote on. So it's not rubber stamped and, and I'm, I speak for myself, I'm taking notes. I saw some of my colleagues also taking notes when uh, town codes were put out there and everything and we'll follow up and look into that and also seek legal advice on it. But um, it's not at the point where there's bodies voting on it yet. And then when it comes to that point, then I would address if there's you know for or against, if you're opposite of that, then question each one individually on that. But right now as a board, we have not voted on that okay, to be approved or denied. Because one of the things that I have also heard, and again, I, you know, this is- Your time is up. Yeah, yeah so. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I heard the bell. <laughs> is a motion that, to give her more time. I'll right. give her more. Is Go that ahead. there's a possibility that if you deny it, that you could be take the town could be taken to court. Okay, mm. it will be that as it may. But if the residents don't want it, isn't that your role to defend the residents when there is enough? Um, I'm not. Gonna, the term outrage is what comes to mind. That's not really the right <laughs> word. 
but if there's enough uh, people that are saying they don't want it. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, I took too much okay. time. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, so um, we're done with the public comment period, and uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second.